you start when you first go in there they, they pack you down to make sure you've got no drugs and that stuff on you and then they'll put you in that cell uh, and then they'll give you the lab mold bag basically that's like a sandwich and a, a grapefruit and like a pack of cheese crackers maybe if you're lucky and then you'd go to the next one where they just keep on moving you around and then the third one you'd go and have your fingerprints done and they do your fingerprints and by this time they're finding out who you are once they find out who you are they come and they hit you with your charge you, you just have a piece of paper <coughs> that tells you your charges I had a few but I thought to myself well they can't get me for drugs because I didn't have no fucking drugs on me they haven't found no drugs in me bastard house so how the fuck hell can they do me for drugs well later on we found out that it was just phone calls or anything because me and Wild when we were fucking off it we'd like fucking and uh, yeah we'd talk a lot about on the phone about meet me here or oh, I'll fucking I'll do this and I'll do that. I'd threaten people on the fucking phone all day long and like but fucking but I'd follow through too so they had me for enforcing and I thought well they still can't have me for fucking drugs I've got one on them there haven't I everybody else is getting done for drugs so they can't do me for drugs so I haven't got no fucking drugs but um they did wingle fucking to charge me with drugs as well, didn't they? What they do is it's called a conspiracy case. So if we roll the clock back a bit, before the weeks leading up to Wild Man's arrest, long before that, Wild Woman was actually raided previously. And on that occasion, the police alleged to have found thousands of XC pills, tens of thousands of hits of acid, ketamine, GHB. Mexican pharmaceuticals, cocaine, crystal meth. There was a lot of stuff, wasn't but there? Yeah, but it wasn't in her house, was it? it was no, no, house that's why I said alleged. It. Alleged. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's all alleged. So it was like. <laughs> obviously, it was ours. There was a fucking empty <laughs> house next door, you know what I mean? Could have got the safe house a little bit further away. Look, you know, so I got shit on your own doorstep. <laughs> Van Buren would have been good. <laughs> <laughs> so we all get taken to this processing centre. Oh, can before... I say one thing? I was never told any of this about the safe house either. Otherwise, I'd have been fucking. He'd have been, been house. breaking into it. So we all go to these like mobile home police units first when we're arrested. Yeah. For that's where we get an initial processing. Mm -hmm. They're doing like. Sending us, is it f uh, fingerprints and mug sh shots? Fingerprints and mug shots. Police Department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they put us in the Tempe Police Jails before the horseshoe. That's correct. And that's where Cody Bates then told me the story of the helicopters following him and the motorbikes pulling him over. And also our DJ friend, Gary, was in there. Yeah. And he told us his story. He just got a job as a fundraiser for the Republican campaign. <laughs> and, he, and he was just at his like, first days at work. And this multi-agency investigation task force fucking shows up. Grabs him. The Republican, is that the one with the elephant in it? That's the one with George Bush in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, we're all in the Tempe police station before we go to Sheriff Joe Power's jail system. And, and more people are popping up. And then they put us in a van, don't they, to take us all over. Yeah. And that's when the women are in the van with us as well, yeah, then, aren't they? Yeah, we could actually talk. It's a wild woman and um, our Asian friend and Asian friends. And um, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're like, what the fuck? You know, this is obviously bigger than we thought. Then we get to the Horseshoe, Madison Street Jail. So Madison Street Jail, horse, it's a horseshoe formation. It's all subterranean. You don't know if it's night or day. Except for when the heat rises and falls, it's the snoring desert. All the newly arrested people are in there, like gangbangers, hobos, drunks, people who've been tasered by the police. It's just like a zoo in there, honestly. God. you got people gobbing it off the next minute. They just get snatched. You get these big fucking mufti squad guys, and they just come and grab them. They throw them in a fucking chair, put like a mask on them, like a spit mask, and they can't fucking spit at you or anything. And they just strap you up, and you see just some people in the chair, and they're like that for days, just rocking. Just lost cause. A lot of them are lost causes. It looks like a medieval torture device, the restraint chair. It's like black and it's tilted back. Like you said, they put the spit hood on you. 
and you do you, you, people just howling with the hoods on like this. It looks like something going to Santa Bay or something. I'd been in there a few times, mate. Not with the spitholds and that. I knew how to behave in prison and in, in, in county. There's no point you fight. You, 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 it's lost target. But um, I've been in there a few times, and most of my bail would have been like a thousand, thousand dollars. You get a good bails, man. You pay like ten percent, don't you? Pay yeah. the hundred, and then like fucking promise him you'll pay him. What was your bail on this occasion? Well, I thought they did a spelling mistake. It was three hundred and fifty-seven thousand. So I'm thinking that I thought it was like three hundred and fifty-seven hundred. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it's no, it's three hundred and fifty-seven thousand. Yeah, because I was shouting at you through the window, wasn't I? Yeah. Is your have you got a fucking big bail? Mine was three quarters of a million. And I thought I had a mistake. When you said yours was in the hundreds of thousands, I was like, oh, I thought, I thought, well, that goes to fucking, um, there's only so much you can do, like, but just me and Sean's a fucking over a million. Even if you, you've you got to come up with a hundred grand. And by that time, they started taking assets and everything else as well, haven't they? They take all your money on the day. They, they seize all your bank accounts. So our main charge now is conspiracy, crime syndicate, Continuous criminal enterprise using uh, electronic devices to use drug transactions. They were lesser felonies, but those first three I said, they were like class two felonies. Prosecutor also slapped serious drug offender status on yeah. us, which that alone is 25 uh, to life. And I'd been out of the country for most of this too, to be fair. I'd been fucking you know, down in America for a while, wasn't I? He was um, back in Not England. America. For, he was in a deportation prison. Yeah. He was in England, he was in Ca uh, Canada, he was in Mexico. So how did you find the horseshoe then? Because we were in there for about two or three days, weren't we? Yeah. Well, like I said, I'd been there before from fucking stupid arguing with and stuff. So I, I didn't mind that. But it's generally just normally that when, you, when you're there and it's just like you're arguing with and stuff and uh, with Corey. It was just basically... You go and see the judge in the fucking morning and he bail you, you know what I mean? It's like... Corey's wild man's girlfriend out there who like to have a clit tased. Yeah, yeah. If you want those stories, again, in wild man's playlist below the description box. Another titty girl dancer. Something about them. They're all right, though, aren't they? You know what I mean? Fun <laughs> girls. <laughs> so you, so going through Horseshoe was routine for you. Um, then you get... You see, we saw a judge, didn't we? Yeah, we seen the judge. What was that like for you? Well, I thought it was quite comical, actually. I spotted, uh, sis, I spotted and we were all sat there. And Well, actually, first time, I was very lucky to even get to see the judge because as we're all going to see the judge, we're in, we're in these cells here and then they've got the women in the other cells there. But when they take us all up, they take us up together. So, like, fucking, I'm in the elevator with, like, fucking me woman. So I'm, like, trying to kiss on her and shit and the fucking courses, didn't they? So, actually, they sent me back on... It wasn't the very first one, but the second time I had a court appearance, I waited three months for, they fucking sent me back and put me in the fucking cells and said I couldn't behave myself. So, fucking, you're not seeing the judge. Wait again for another three months. But the first time I seen him, it was a formality, really, you're in black and white, and I'm, I'm looking over and smiling at um, ADD. And then the fucking uh, the New Times, uh, it was like a, a newspaper. They must have just caught me perfect, mustn't they smiling? Oh, yeah. I took the photograph. There is a good picture of Wild Man. He's got like this Viking beard, and he's in court, and he's black and white stripes, and he's just like, <laughs> Remember telling the detectives the fucking bunch of fucking idiots to in Tempe? <laughs> I didn't give a flying fuck, to be fair. I was, I was, it was like caught or not caught. I was never expecting eight years. I wouldn't have been as fucking gobby if I thought that. I'd have been fucking crying in the girl. <laughs> but, <laughs> so we get to the end of the horseshoe and we all then get classified at various security levels. So the first group of co-defendants, there was 13 people, and most of them got classified to minimum security. So in the beginning, me and Wildman both got classified to medium security, Towers Jail. But the prosecutor put a do not house together on us. 
So I went off to Tower 6, and I've told loads of stories about that on YouTube. You went off to Tower... Four at first. What was that like? It was all right. It was like fucking... Because um, you'd get to... The, no matter what tower you're at, you'd always get to see three or four people that you fucking knew in there, you know what I mean? Can you describe what it's like for people, a tower, what it means? Okay, a tower is... Basically, it it's like... It's in the shape of a hexagon. You've got a tower here. So there's the tower, right? And in that tower, there's a guard. And then there's a pod coming off here. A, B, C, D, E, F. Now that guard, can you look at all the pods, what's going on and what's happening? And each pod, you'd open the metal doors to walk in. You'd have stairs going up to your top cells. And you've got your bottom cells. You've only got cells on one side, correct? Yeah, it's like two tiers yeah. looking down at the middle so that the guards can see the two tiers. Where I was at, there was four pods, guards in the middle in the fish bowl, they call it, up top of this plexiglass bowl. They've got a little staircase they can run down, but to get in the pod, there's the sliding doors. So it takes a bit of time for them to react to get into the day room if anything's kicking off. So you've got your two tiers facing the guards and the day room in that shape. shape and then you've got all your little tables steel tables bolted to the floor tiny little tv on the wall two phones on the wall with very short cords so you can't hang yourself now those cells originally designed for one man but they got three dudes in there so yeah, 45 shocker. people in each pod which was designed for 15 people yeah it's chocker it's chocker and some of them did have four and did have a guy on the fucking floor as well like it's, it was horrible and then on the the, the in the, in the far end there, you'd have your showers. But, um, yeah, there's, there's not really a lot you can say about it. I mean, you, the prick's got you wearing pink fucking underwear. you got pink boxer shorts on and pink fucking socks. The food, I didn't mind it, to be fair. Like, but I, I could understand how people did have a gripe. I mean, I don't mind the odd black eye and your potato, like, stuff like that, but... The Red Death was a bit nasty, I suppose, in a way. <laughs> the Red Death was the mystery meat slop that occasionally had a dead rat in it. And there was another one called Kibbles and Bits, which was like cat food. But basically what it was is all the food we got in there is donated. But you'll read on the packet, because I knew some of the kitchen guys in there, and then on the packet it says, not fit for human consumption. It's supposed to be for dogs, because he had a place right next door to it what was the dog kennels and he'd brag get because he'd pay two pound a day for the dogs but he'd only pay a pound a day for a prisoner yeah 50 cents or less per day to feed each prisoner yeah. rotten moldy food he's an asshole wasn't he really <laughs> sheriff joe arpaio 